Hello again. Why don't you stay and listen, hero? Today's lesson will be on how to make friends. This fine hero has just given us a good example of how to make friends by donating this book to the school. Helping people out and giving presents are both good ways to make friends. Can anybody tell me another way to make friends? Sir! Sir! Yes? Tell them you'll smash their teeth in if they won't be friends with you. No, Billy. <laughs> Threatening people is not really a good way to make friends with them. I think we need to work on this some more. Thank you, Once upon a time, in a village by the sea, lived a boy called Arkham with his family. Peaceful were their lives for many a year, till one day a band of savages did appear. Destroyed that peaceful village by the sea and killed the poor boy's family. But of Harkon himself, they found no trace, for the boy had hid in quite a safe place. And though he wished to help in his heart, he stayed hidden till the savages did depart. Then he emerged to find his whole family killed, and the streets of the village with corpses filled. Oh, dear me, this really is the most unoriginal tosh. This one spins to see a hero. Who's the red-robed warrior that brings death and destruction to all of Albion? Jack! Who's the legend in the mask with the strength of ten heroes? It's Jack! Who's the demon that stalks in the night, dragging bad children into hell? Jack! Some say that Jack of Blades has lived forever and is not of this world. But there are those who claim it is not Jack, but his mask that we should fear, and that many men have worn it over the centuries. Whatever the truth, it seems Jack has escaped death once more. Who can hope to defeat him now? Thank you, Hill. <clears throat> Twas in the latter days of the kingdom old that a boatload of travelers, wheat and rice, fleeing our land for fear of the sword, discovered an island that was true paradise. There were they welcomed by the native folk with gifts of fruit and fowl and pig and trout and a strange kind of ale brewed from egg yolk that the refugees drank till it knocked them out. Soon they were stirred from their peaceful slumbers by the splattery coughs of their gracious hosts who had taken ill and were dying in numbers of colds their visitors had brought to their coasts. Ere long, the kindly natives were all but extinct, and as they knew not how to gather nature's bounty, the fate of the foreigners to theirs was linked. They died of starvation, though surrounded by plenty. A few local survivors did their paradise rebuild, erecting this time a great fortress in the sand. It would stop them once more getting killed, lest those ba um, bad people from Albion return to their land. Hooray! 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 Hooray!
Hello, my is suddenly perfect. I've yet to meet a... <laughs> a long time ago, well before the age of the Old Kingdom, the skies of Albion were full of fearsome, majestic dragons. They flew wherever they wished, ate the people's livestock, rained down fire on their villages, and distressed their damsels. Then came the kingdom of Archon, and with it heroes who hunted the dragons for sport, almost driving them to extinction. Before long, every home in Albion had dragon scale curtains, dragon claw back scratchers, and dragon foot paperweights. The few remaining dragons fled to the northern wastes, and there they remain to this day. Though they are nowhere near as powerful now as they once were, they still represent a hero's ultimate test. Anyone want a point? Oh, come on! Ah. How many of you have been to the Witchwood Arena? Ah, but have you ever stopped to look at the statues in the Hall of Heroes? Some of the greatest heroes in Albion's history are celebrated there. Mighty champions who conquered the arena and the people's hearts. In the days of the Old Kingdom, heroes would lead their fans into battles so they could see their skill and bravery in combat. But all too often, spectators would find themselves torn limb from limb by palverines, or caught in the backwash of a hero's spell. And so, the arena was built in Witchwood, to give heroes a permanent stage on which to fight their duels without endangering the audience. Creatures are brought there from all over Albion for heroes to face, and the battles get more elaborate with every year that passes. But one rule remains unchanged. Should either hero wish it, the final battle between them can be fought to the death. What was the season oh, you did it? Yeah. 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 Any book? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you stay? The way of the warrior doth take its toll on a hero's face. And ere long, women will fly and escape before he can give chase. Scarred and dejected, a hero named Ralph stole all of the trader's riches. He made use of their gold and bought romantic gifts for all of the... ladies. <laughs> The women of Albion fell at his feet, and Ralph had the pick of the town, till he finally chose a pretty young girl and bought her a fine wedding gown. But too late did he see that love that is true isn't founded on wealth. His wife's only care was for money and gems he kept up on the shelf. By way of divorce, Ralph exercised his axe on her head. This he did mount up Yay! on the wall, just over the bed. So did the woman sadly become the world's first trophy wife. And Ralph did give up the matrimonial for the hero's life. Any books for us to history? Why don't you stay? Can any of you tell me who built the ancient pillars at Lookout Point? Yes? The people in the Old Kingdom, sir. That's right. They once ruled all of Albion, and the ruins of their cities can still be found wherever you go. The kingdom was founded by a great lord named Archon, who united Albion using the power of the Sword of Eons. But over time, the sword began to corrupt him, and the kingdom fell into darkness. Strange monuments were built 
to focus the magical power of the kingdom, and terrifying armored figures were summoned to guard them. But at the very height of its power, the old kingdom collapsed, and Archon and his sword disappeared. What happened to them? Nobody knows. You have this one spins to see it. Thanks to this kind hero, today's lesson is from Volume Three of the Creatures of Albion. If trolls ruled the land and dragons the skies, then the mighty kraken are masters of the sea. A few men have ever seen a kraken, and fewer still have lived to tell the tale. Since before the times of the Old Kingdom, these terrifying creatures have lurked in the seas that surround Albion. Their tentacles can grow to be over a hundred feet long and are strong enough to crush a ship like kindling. A brave sailor once drove away a kraken by hacking off one of those gargantuan tentacles. But to kill one of the beasts, oh, that would truly be a heroic task. You have done us all such a great service. I don't know if we can ever adequately repay you. I do have a little something, and, well, I know it's not much, but the children think you'll love it. We used it in our production of The Mage's Apprentice. It was a little large for our particular actors. Ooh, do you have a dip? What's this? Hooray! Thank Yay! you, Jim. Yay! I'm sure we can put this... Yay! There was once a lord who thought himself good with an arrow, until people saw that his lies ran right through to his marrow. Many months in the cells of Bargate he spent, plotting his redemption. And once he was free, he hunted all evil without exception. One day he met his match, a foul and mighty Balverine. He did not die from its bite, but his curse was obscene. He became one of those creatures, and pale as snow was his fur. To kill him came then a red-caped woman, a true connoisseur. A silver arrow pierced his blackened heart and sent him to his grave. And so he died in infamy, without the acceptance he craved. Thank you, Jim. There once lived a hob, and Maxley was his name. He was that rarest of hobs, one with a brain. Making his bed in a stream wasn't for him. He'd rather live in a village, there among men. One day he decided to travel to town. He slew a great noble and put on his gown. In Bowerstone by all was he complimented, and though short of stature, he stood proud and erected. Hmm. <laughs> Maxley forgot what he was and grunted hello. And when the men heard his voice, all they did know. They called out for guards who lopped off his head. It stuck on a spike, dumb and ugly and dead. So when you're about to open your mouth, remember Maxley the Hob, for it's better to be thought an idiot than to be killed by a mob. turn to volume two of the creatures of Albion. Trolls are an ancient race formed from the rock and soil in which they were born. They have the strength of many men and can withstand all but the mightiest of blows. Get too close 
and they will jump onto the ground with such force that the shock waves can shatter a man's bones. But trolls are also slow lumbering creatures and rarely move. So, if ever you see one, your best hope is to run away. If you're lucky, you won't be crushed to death by the boulders they throw after you. Do any of you know what lies beyond the Nine Seas? Yes? The Northern Wastes. Well done, Sue. Legends say that Jack of Blades first appeared there, and that it was the home of a mighty empire. Today, its ancient cities are buried deep beneath the ice. But there are still some who believe the empire will rise again and that the people of the northern wastes will awaken when Albion is united once more. Yeah! Yeah! Any books? Yeah! Yeah! Thank you. What strange land is this to which the storm my body has delivered? Surely heaven it is. And I be dead, for as in a dream I saw the ship torn. From neath me by the waves and felt death's fell kiss. But hush now, who comes here? Truly my eyes doth deceive me, for I thought I saw some strange thing move amongst the wreck by the shore. Now I know that I be really dead. For in this fair land do angles tread. That's angels, Billy, not angles. <laughs> Hooray! Yay! 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 Today, we'll be studying Volume 1 of The Creatures of Albion. Now, who here knows what screamers are? <laughs> I bet you've never heard one, though, have you? That's because they stay away from the towns. But out in the countryside, it's a rather different story. And you can sometimes hear them crying out in the night. Their scream can pierce even the bravest of men's hearts. Hearing it will not just chill you to the bone, but sap your energy too. According to the sage Richard Phillips, they feed upon the life force of men, sucking out their souls. By the way, if you ever see one, you'll soon end up like them, screaming. <laughs> Why don't you stay and listen, hero? Belverines are the fiercest creatures in Albion. But there was once a brave young girl for whom they held no fear. One day, a beast attacked Knothole Glade, where she lived. The villagers all ran away until she alone stood to face it. The creature was twice her size and she fought its teeth and claws armed only with a stake. By the time the warriors arrived, the beast lay dead at the girl's feet, and her dress was soaked with its blood. From that day forth, she was known to all as Scarlet Robe. As she grew older, she became a great hero, driving the evil Balverines from much of Albion and competing in the Witchwood Arena. Five and twenty years have I tended this inn. 
not knowing my wife was living in sin. For while I served the townsfolk ale by day, at night my wife served them in another way. But soon they'll regret leading her astray. When next they sip my ale, it will be their lives that pay. He who hath slept with my love will die at its taste. Then I shall see if any among them can call themselves chaste. Uh, thank you, Billy. I think that's enough for today. reading from the Windbreaker Rule Book. Perhaps the gentleman who gave us this book could demonstrate the uh, benefits of its teachings himself. Uh, yes. I see. Well, that was most edifying. But I really don't... Oh. Dear Lord, something must have crawled up inside him and died. Shit! <laughs> Please, mind your language in front of the children. Oh dear, I knew this was a mistake. I'm gonna be Oh, that you have. All right then. Today's lesson is from the Ugly Guide, which this hero has donated to our school. For some reason. Now, what do you think makes a person look ugly? Having stupid hair. That's right. Certain haircuts can make a person less attractive, as can some forms of facial hair, especially on a woman. Any other ideas? Eating too much. Very good. That's why everybody in Albion has such a perfect waistline. From the greatest hero to the lowliest beggar. Except for Jenna from Orchard Farm, of course. She used to be but a slip of a girl, but now... <laughs> that woman certainly likes her cider. Uh, anyway, uh, that concludes our lesson for today. Ooh, I suppose you are not. All right, then. Today, we will be looking at You Are Not a Bad Person. It seems this hero has studied the book in great depth already. But perhaps... One of you can tell me how you can make yourself less scary. Wear a pretty dress. That's right. A person's clothes say a lot about them. And wandering around town dressed in dark leather or chain mail can frighten people. Any other ideas? Don't wear anything at all. Ah. Well, uh... That might make you look more silly than scary. I'm not too sure men running around naked inspire much confidence. Perhaps we should see what the book has to say on this matter. All right then. Yay! Today we'll be reading from The Oakvale Rain. Some of you may find what you're about to hear disturbing. I was playing with my teddy bear, Rosie, when the bandits attacked. The kind boy from up the road had just rescued her from my brother. I didn't know then I would never see them again. It was the screaming that told me they were coming, and I hid under an old cart. From there, I saw the bandits kill all my friends and burn everything I called home. I wanted to help them, but I was so scared I couldn't move. 
uh, maybe we should finish this book some other time. In 10, uh, 15 years, perhaps? Hurrah! Ah, what's this? Yay! Eyes? Yay! 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 Uh, I really hope none of you follow the teachings of this book, uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, you should learn to recognize the signs of evil. There are many ways a person can instill fear in others, such as covering one's body in tattoos and wearing dark clothes. But a truly scary person is able to express his evilness through actions alone. Let's see how this works. A hero. Would you regale us with an evil sneer, perhaps? Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Very effective. Uh, now, uh, according to this book, uh, you can also make yourself scary by performing terrible crimes, such as uh, killing innocents. But um, I, I, I think we'll leave that chapter for uh, another day. Now then, class, let's all say thank you to the nice hero. Yay! Yeah! Mm, you have been sure to turn a tree. All right, then. Yeah! Twinblade was once a great hero. A giant of a man, his swords were feared throughout Albion. But, at the height of his fame, he abandoned the guild, deciding he had no need to earn gold through quests. He could simply take it. And so, he left for the woods and became a bandit. Over the years, he united the feuding bandit clans until he became their king. He built a vast fortified camp, hidden near Oakvale and plundered the passing traders as he desired. He was as renowned and feared as he ever was, and now had no guild constraints to hold him back. Sir, what happened to Twinblade? He was defeated in a duel by this brave hero who spared his life. But no king can face such a defeat and keep his crown, not even among bandits. Journal of Bloody Nose. Zero in training. Day 14. This week, we've been developing our stealth skills by playing hide and seek. Knowing how to run and hide from your enemies is an important skill for any Zero, says Days. He seems to be a master of the art. It took us all day to find him after he teleported away. Eventually, we heard his cries and found him wedged inside a hollow tree in the Academy Woods. He wasn't at all happy that it took us so long to find him, but he decided to test our hiding skills next. We must be really good at it, because we've been out here in the woods for two days now, and he still hasn't found us. Yeah! All right. Yeah! Yeah! Let's turn to the sock method and see how we can make you sexier in ten days. Yeah! Now, oh, it looks like this hero still needs a little practice. But perhaps he could demonstrate something simple? Come on. Oh, my. That's quite enough of that, hero. And that brings today's lesson to a close. Definitely. The final is something I'd like to present to you. On one of our excursions, the little Billy strayed off the path, as he always does, and found this. He tried to hide it under his shirt, if you can imagine. I'm sure you can put it to good use. 
I want to be just like him when I grow up. <laughs>